Good day to the viewing and the listening public. This is the COVID-19 update for Tuesday, June 1, 2021. I am Godfrey Brooms and with me is the Minister of Health, the Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony. Minister Anthony, thank you for joining me here. Uh, thank you very much for having me. And Minister, I'll hazard a guess that all is well with you and I know that is exactly what you would want for the entire population in Guyana to remain safe from COVID-19 and the best way to do this according to yourself and other health experts um, is to be vaccinated. In line with that, Minister, could you state the amount of persons fully vaccinated and those that would have received their first COVID-19 vaccine? Well, I guess I'm one of those persons who are fully vaccinated because I took both doses of my vaccine and I want to encourage others to do the same. As of today, I think we have hit uh, what I would consider a very significant milestone because we now have uh, 201,000 persons, 347, uh, who would have received the first dose of their vaccine. So that's, that's a significant milestone, uh, 201, 347 persons receiving their first dose. That would account for 41.4% of our adult population and um, now we have to make sure while we continue getting more people their first doses that we want to also make sure that they come back for their second doses so as of today uh, we have uh, 69,486 persons who would have received their second doses of the vaccine and um, that would mean that now, 14.3% of our adult population have been fully immunized. So we are going to work during this week to get more people to become fully immunized. We want to see more people coming in to get their, um, their second doses. As you know, you can receive your second dose once you're uh, for AstraZeneca, anytime between 4 to 12 weeks. Um, for the Sputnik V, anytime between 4 to 12 weeks. And there are still a few people who had the Sinopharm vaccines that um, did not come back for their second dose. If, you know, anyone who is listening and they are one of those persons who got their first dose Sinopharm, and you're Jew now because from all our records we are seeing a lot of people are Jew, for their second dose, but they didn't come back. We are encouraging them to come back so that we can uh, make sure that those persons receive their second doses. Other than that, by the, um, by the end of the week, um, all the Sinopharm that we have remaining, we want to start using it and make sure that other people can have vac vac get vaccinated. So we don't want to wait now. Um, and if you don't come back within a certain period for your second dose, that's the Sinopharm second dose, then we'll have to start using it for other persons. Thanks, Minister. Um, we're going to go into a question now from News Talk Radio Guyana. They're asking if you could say definitively if the AstraZeneca vaccines have an expiry date and when does the vaccine expire? All vaccines have the expiry date. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know what's the logic behind that. More, all medical products would have um, an expir expiratory date. So uh, vaccines that we have, they have a date. And for most of the vaccines, COVID vaccines, they have a relatively short period. And that's what we're making sure that people get their vaccines within that time period. You would have noticed that when you come to one of our vaccination center, if you're going to be vaccinated, apart from going through the process of, you know, the nurses checking and making sure that you're eligible, they're also at the time of the, before they administer the vaccine, they'll show you the vial, they'll talk to you about the side effects, and they will also tell you, inform you, of the date of uh, expiration of the vaccines. And so every person that receive a vaccine would be informed of the date so that you're getting a, a product that um, would be wholesome and that you're, you know, you're immunized with, with one that um, 
would have a, a viable expiry date to speak, so to speak. Minister, if we can just come off of the COVID-19 just for a bit, what is the current health situation across the region, regions in light of the floods and have there been any reports of outbreaks of waterborne diseases? We have not received any uh, reports of any waterborne diseases. We are monitoring for it. So there are three things that we are looking for right now. Uh, waterborne diseases, we are looking for people with skin rashes, and um, we are also on the lookout for leptospirosis. Uh, we have had, I heard uh, from some persons in the media that they were saying that we have outbreaks of dengue. We haven't had any outbreaks of dengue in any of the regions so far. Up to this morning, we have had a call with the regional health offices of all the different regions, and they haven't reported any outbreaks of anything, and they have been constantly monitoring. Currently, in, um, in Region 1, we have teams that are in the, those flooded areas, paying more attention to what is going on there. And they have been um, assisting some of the residents in distributing bleach so that you can add bleach to your water to make sure that the water is safe. Um, we have also been distributing uh, oral rehydration salts to the uh, various health centers just to make sure that they have adequate oral rehydration salts. So in case we have persons, especially young, young children with diarrheal disease, that we can replace that with the appropriate um, fluids. Uh, we have also been um, monitoring for uh, leptospirosis. So again, we haven't seen anything so far. Uh, in um, Region 2, uh, we have had areas around Cherokee where we had special teams that went in because that area is flooded. And in Syriki and Dredge Creek, um, our health posts in those two communities have been flooded. So we have moved the operations of the health post to the school, which is on higher ground. Um, in Region 3, we continue to monitor areas such as Bell West, and, um, and we, we have been in both phases, Phase 1 and Phase 2, because they have experienced some amount of flooding. And in some parts of Perica, they have been um, flooding in those areas. So we have been monitoring it. Our health team in the region have gone out and have been looking at that. In Region 4, we haven't had any substantive um, flooding. Nevertheless, the teams here are still on the lookout, just in case there's anything. Region 5, we have been in the Maikoni Creek area. Uh, we have had clinics at Mora Point, and uh, the people from the surrounding villages would have benefited from some of our interventions there. Uh, today, we have a team that is going into the Mahaika Creek. They would be at Big Bayabu, and um, along the, the communities from around there would also benefit from um, this outreach that they'll be having. So those, the few residents that probably are still at Joe Hook and Grass Hook and so forth would be able to come down to Bayabu if they have any, um, any ailments that they would like us to, to treat. Because there are now very few people in those two communities that I have mentioned. You would recall after one of the large floods, um, we would have moved people from those areas and given them house lots um, in the Hope area. So most people are now living away from there, but they go back to do farming along that community. Uh, so just in case if there are any persons who need uh, medical help, uh, we have a team that would be in um, Big Bayabu uh, today. Uh, in Region 6, um, we have one of our health centers in Black Bush Polda at Yakasari that has been flooded. The bottom floor has been flooded, so we have moved the operations to the upper floor. And uh, again, for those areas that have been affected in Region 6, we have health teams that have been out and about, again, providing things like ORS and bleach and, and so forth to those communities. 
in Region 7. Uh, we have teams that are working in Bartica and in, in the surrounding communities. And they have been, um, again, monitoring for any diseases. Uh, Region 8, we have reports of flooding in Bamboo Creek, the health center there. And again, we have deployed teams to take a look and to help the residents there. And apart from Bamboo Creek, we have, um, we have been monitoring the situation in Karisparu, uh, but they are very isolated and flooded. But we have been getting radio reports, and we'll see how we can intervene. And we also have some reports of severe flooding in Tumatumari, where about 25 people have been affected. So again, we are sending a team to that area today, and um, we'll be better informed. In Region 10, we have areas such as uh, Spikeland and the mines um, have been flooded. And again, um, we have teams that are monitoring there. We had a team that, um, in addition to the health workers at Kokwani, we had a team that went from Linden to Kokwani yesterday to do evaluations and to see whether or not there are any issues. In Region 9, we also continue to monitor and we have teams at different places in Region 9 working along. Um, yesterday we sent in a team to Katoka and um, we are going to get back those reports by today. Minister, you mentioned that bleach and oral rehydration salts are being distributed to the persons that need. What are some of the other items or drugs on standby to be distributed should the need arise? Well, if it depends on what we are detecting. So in anticipation of um, rashes and so forth, we have sent in uh, things like uh, skin ointments and creams to various regions. In anticipation that children might get uh, real diseases, we have sent in the ORS and um, bleach to help to purify water. So we are anticipating and making sure that supplies are closer to the point of usage and so that's what we're doing. But so far, we, ha we haven't had any major complaints, um, health complaints, that is. Thanks, Minister. There have been reports of floods countrywide, all regions, Minister. How is this hampering the Ministry of Health's robust vaccination campaign? Well, you know, the health staff now, we have to do the monitoring for uh, things like diarrheal diseases and other waterborne diseases and, and, and so forth. But at the same time, we are still uh, pushing our vaccination program. So, you know, we, we have been working over the last, uh, yesterday we probably did about 5,000 um, persons some of them getting their first doses, others getting second doses. So we're still pushing ahead with our vaccination programs. And, you know, it is challenging, um, it is difficult, but we're still moving ahead because we want people to be vaccinated as soon as possible. And so now during the rainy season, have we seen a decreased number of persons coming out to take the vaccine? Actually, no. I mean, um, there are communities where there is generally hesitancy and we are working to change those persons' minds. But um, in other communities, whether it's raining or not, um, people have been coming out and um, hopefully that trend will continue. Thank you. Minister, um, as usual, we would um, state some myths, uh, what persons are claiming. Uh, one of which states after getting a COVID-19 vaccine, you will test the positive for COVID-19 because the virus has been injected into your body, albeit a weakened form. So again, um, the way that vaccines are designed, vaccines are designed to stimulate your immune system, uh, meaning that there would be proteins from the virus that would then trigger an immune response. So your body would develop antibodies. Uh, so when you do, if, if you want to check to see whether or not you're infected with uh, COVID, you will, to diagnose COVID in somebody, you have to do a PCR test or an antigen test that detects uh, whether the virus is present or not. 
because of the way the vaccines are designed, um, it would not affect those tests because your body would be producing antibodies and therefore when we are checking for the presence of uh, COVID, we check to see whether the virus itself is present. So PCR and antigen tests would still come back positive if you um, are if you were infected with COVID, right? And if you want to know how um, robust the vaccination has been, uh, or the vaccine has been, if you've taken the vaccine, then you will have to monitor your antibody response. So there are different things. Minister, um, persons are also claiming um, when you take either the Sinopharm, the AstraZeneca, or the Sputnik V vaccine, you will get sick from COVID-19. How is that possible? <laughs> so, again, vaccines are made um, with fragments of the virus. It's not the entire virus. It's a piece. That piece cannot give you uh, any disease, right? So, it's like if you have your shirt and you have just the sleeve of your shirt. That doesn't mean you have on a shirt if you just have the sleeve. But the, the little piece would trigger the immune system uh, to make antibodies so that if you come in contact with a person who is COVID positive um, and you get some of that virus, then it would, your immune system would be primed to defend you. Right? So vaccines, what vaccines does is to be able to give you protection without giving you the disease. That's what vaccines do. So all the vaccines that we have, they're designed to make sure that you get protection from the disease without giving you the disease. And for all the vaccines that we have for COVID-19, whether it's AstraZeneca, uh, Sputnik V or um, Sinopharm, all of these vaccines would give you protection without giving you the disease. And I think that's what is important for people to understand. And we have, um, we have been able to, to see that in action because of the 69,486 persons who have been fully vaccinated we haven't seen them come back with any COVID-19 infection. We are not seeing them coming uh, to the hospital to be hospitalized because of COVID, because they don't have infection. They're fully vaccinated. And none of those persons have ended up in the ICU, or none of those persons have died from COVID. Because once you're fully vaccinated, you're protected. And that's what we want people to understand. So those persons also who have received their first doses and they're due for their second dose, come back and get your second dose. Because after first dose, while you get some protection, you're not fully protected. You're only partially protected. So when you get both doses, then you can consider yourself to be fully protected. Okay? So we have now 201 thousand persons who have received their first doses and as soon as they become due for their second dose uh, they need to come back and, and get that second dose so for AstraZeneca once you have your first dose and you're now let's say four weeks after you have received your first dose anytime between four and twelve weeks you can get your second dose vaccines for AstraZeneca for the Sputnik V, um, second dose is between 4 and 12 weeks as well. For the Sinopharm, uh, you should get your second dose by the fourth week. So we want people there, I know there are lots of people who have received their first dose, come back and get your second dose. Minister, I know you've been over time stating the importance of being vaccinated, but some persons are still questioning whether or not COVID-19 is real. Only today around the Starbrook area, persons are claiming um, the vagrants are not dying from COVID-19 and they're not wearing masks, they're not sanitizing, they're sometimes eating out of the garbage bins. What would you like to say to those persons? 
I, I really don't um, understand their reluctance. The science is very clear about the benefits of vaccines, and we need to encourage people to get their vaccines. I guess in any society there are skeptics, and there are people who are naysayers, but look at the evidence. You don't have to look at America or Canada or wherever else. Look right here in Guyana. We haven't had a single case where persons who have been fully vaccinated have come back to the hospital or ended up in the ICU or die from COVID. So just use that as an example. And if you want other examples, you can look at what is happening in the United States. In the United States, they had a lot of cases. They have immunized a substantive part of their population. And now you have seen a drop in cases, a drop in hospitalization, a drop in deaths. When you look at uh, places like Israel, that has very high rates of uh, vaccination, again, you have seen a similar pattern. In the UK recently, they have been able to do, again, a substantive part of their population, and they have turned around the, uh, the epidemic in their country. So countries that have been uh, vaccinating and once you reach high levels of vaccination, it is not just protecting the individual, but also going to interrupt the, the dynamics of transmission within the country because more people become fully vaccinated than the virus itself uh, would not be able to spread because they, would, they wouldn't have unvaccinated people to spread it to. So the more people that become vaccinated, it's reducing the chances of this virus spreading. And that's what we have to aim for. That's what her herd immunity is all about. So for those naysayers, um, we wouldn't be able to, to convert everybody, but we hope that they can look around and take an objective view of what is happening. And they should also follow the signs. They should read and, um, and make the decisions for themselves rather than listening to what other people have been telling them. Um, they are authentic sources of information, and they are people who just think they know, and they would spout all kinds of misinformation. And unfortunately, um, people like to hear these scandalous and juicy kinds of gossip and not pay attention to what is the truth and what is the facts that they have to pay attention to, and use that as the basis of making decisions. So I want to appeal to people Go to the authentic websites, uh, the science-based websites like the Center for Disease Control in, in the U.S. or go to journals that are reputable and you can read there and get a better understanding of what um, this thing is all about. So, you know, we still have people who disbelieve, but I think as more and more people come on board and take their vaccines, um, you know, we'll change that dynamic. Unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately, I would say that the people who are making these uh, misinformed claims are in the minority. Just looking at the numbers that we have seen here, with more than 201,000 persons coming forward to get their vaccines, it's showing already that a lot of people uh, understand the importance of vaccination have come forward, have gotten their vaccines, and they're doing fine. So, you know, we just have to work on this tiny minority that is out there uh, spewing a lot of nonsense. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you. This has been the COVID-19 update with the Minister of Health, the Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony. For more information, you can visit our website at dpi.gov.gy and our social media platforms. More information is also available at the Ministry of Health's website. Godfrey Brooms is saying, stay safe, get vaccinated, wear your masks. Goodbye for now.